progress. So the man of God sent me a message from South Af uh, uh, USA. It's a South African uh, Bishop Emmanuel. It's, Emmanuel Zondo is is in is a South Africa but lives in USA. He said to me, "See, I want continue speaking and opening the eyes of Africans." We know what you know, but we are unable to say it because we are afraid that our members will run away from our churches. <laughs> he said, we know what you know. We believe in what you are saying, and what you are saying is true. But we are afraid that if we say what you are saying, if we say the truth, if we say exactly what you are saying we are going to lose our members that's why we follow you we support you in all that you are doing keep opening the eyes of our people keep letting them know uh, keep taking them back to their roots keep letting them know that africa is a great continent and there is nothing that we need on earth that we cannot achieve Everything we need is here. All we have to do is to open the mindset of our people. And this is what we are doing. Please remember to share the broadcast. See a one destroy UPND. We are tired and suffering here. Dollar is at 26.5. We are going to come to that later. Please remember. Uh, I don't know. <coughs> Sorry about Please remember to share the broadcast quickly. If you have joined, you have not shared the broadcast, you are not receiving anything. Nothing is nothing is going to happen for you because you have not shared. When you share the broadcast, you help to spread the message. You help to make people know. You help to make people understand that yes, yes, what Sia One is saying is true. Yes, see, together we can liberate Africa politically, religiously. Now, this brings me to today's message. <clears throat> Many people say, see, I want hate Bible. See, I want hate Jesus. See, I want does not believe in Jesus. See, I want does not believe in Bible. See, I want does not believe in Christianity. And when I look at them, I laugh. The reason why I laugh is because you do not understand. Who wrote the history of Africa? Who wrote our history? Who wrote books about Africa? You discover that the people that wrote our history are our enemies. Those that don't believe in us. Those that didn't love us. They are the ones that wrote our history. And if I give you a paper to write a history about your enemy, what are you going to write? So I see, I see one dollar has reached at 26.5. I'm coming to that. Don't worry. <coughs> I'm coming to that. Who wrote the history? about africa pay attention this is not a broadcast where you just jump you you up and down you 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 don't learn anything from no here you learn a lot of things i've in the next few minutes we are going to be done but i guarantee you that you are going to learn a lot of things that's why i want you to to continue sharing the history of africa was written by people that didn't love africa that is why when you are reading the Bible as an African, when you are reading the Bible, I'm not against the Bible, I'm not against Jesus. I pray in my church, we mention the name of Jesus. In my church, we pray in the name of Jesus. In my church, we read Bible. I preach from the Bible. Those of you that follow me in the church, you can see that I cannot just come to church and start prophesying and start performing miracle without first of all reading the Bible and preaching from the Bible. I read. Because what you have to know about Bible, and what many of you don't know about Bible, is, is the Bible is a constitution that guides Christianity. Bible is not holy. It's not holy. 
It can never be holy. It is a constitution written to guide Christians. Quran is not holy. Quran is a constitution written to guide the Muslims. Whatever you are doing, you read your Bible and check whether it is aligning to what you are doing or it's not aligning. As a Muslim, whatever you are doing, you read Quran, you check whether what you are doing is aligning to the Muslim uh, pr principles or it's not aligning. So there is nothing holy about Bible. I, I was praying for a family the other day that told me that their mother was killed. And robbers went to their house. And found the mother. And they asked the mother, give us the money that your son sent to you from abroad. She said, I don't have any other, I don't have any money here. So they went in the bedroom and started searching. And they found the money that the son sent from abroad. And when they found it, the armed robbers, they were so angry. They removed the gun. When they removed the gun, the mother brought the Bible and put on her chest. And they shot her. While they were shooting her, she was having the Bible. The bullet scattered the Bible and the bullet destroyed her and she died. Because many of you see Bible as holy. This thing is going to protect me. There are many of you that carry Bible and you cannot sleep unless there is a Bible on your head. Bible is your pillow. And you think that Bible is protecting you. You think that Bible is holy. You think that Bible is God. No! No! Bible was written by a man like you and me. Bible was written like any other paper, any other book. The ingredient, the same ingredient they used to make a exercise book is the ingredient that is used to make Bible. So there is nothing holy about Bible. In fact, if you do your research very, very well, you will come in agreement with me that most of the Bibles are being published by Zondavan. Who are the Zondavans? Zondavans are the same people that publish Quran. They publish many other books. In the same pot where they are cooking many other books, including occultic book, Chinese book, Indian book, that is the same pot that they are using to cook the Bible. So it can never be holy. Is a constitution written that guides Christians. This mentality of my Bible is holy, holy Bible, must come out from you completely. It's not holy. It's a constitution. It's just like a, a Nigeria, a country Nigeria. There is a constitution that guides Nigeria. It tells you that if you do like this, it's against the law. If you do like this, it's against the law of the country. That is the duty of the Bible. It's a constitution that guides us and tells us what to do and not to do. So it's not holy and it can never be holy. Those of you that take it, ah, it's holy. You put it because you're having a bad dream. You carry your Bible, you put it there. You say to them, I'm not going to have bad dream. You are going to have that bad dream. You are going to have bad dream in abundance. <laughs> I hope you are getting I hope you are, you, are, you are following me and following where I'm going. Those of you that want to learn, not everybody. You know, there are people who are too holy. There are people who are too spiritual. Because they are too spiritual, they cannot learn. That is why when you come into a religious organization, Christianity is the poorest and the powerless organization on earth. This is Nigeria. Nigeria is made up of greater popularity of Nigeria are Christians. But Christians... Are not even occupied. Look at how powerful great men and women of God, mighty churches, cathedrals that we have all over the world. But can you believe that a Christian is not even a vice president of this country, not to talk of a president? We we are nothing in this country. Because number one, we are too holy. When there is time to fight, we pray. When there is time to campaign, we pray. When there is time to do politics, we pray. So therefore, leaving everything at the hands of unbelievers. So if you are following C1, one thing that you must remove from your brain is over-spirituality. Don't spiritualize everything. Don't put religion on everything. There is time for everything. There is time for you to work. There is time for you to pray. There is time for you to read. 
If you it's, are doing like this, even Jesus, if you read your Bible and you believe in your Bible, Jesus had the time that he was working with his father at his father's shop as a carpenter. He was not praying that time. He was working. So we have a problem today because Christians are so prayerful. Like I told you before, go around Facebook, go around TikTok, go around churches. There are churches that are doing 30 days of prayer and fasting. Every day they are in the church. That is why Christians are poor. That is why we cannot achieve anything in life. That's why we are not going anywhere on earth. Because we are, we are praying so much without working. We are praying so much without putting effort to succeed on earth. We believe that we are going to succeed in heaven. Our reward is in heaven. But no one has ever gone to heaven and come down here on earth and tell us that there is heaven. <laughs> so what I'm trying to tell you is that number one, as a Christian... You must understand Bible. Bible is a history. Bible is a document. It's a constitution that guides Christianity. And Bible was not written by God. Bible is written by men. Up to today, men are writing Bible. It's not God that wrote Bible. It's not God that is writing Bible. There are people, their business today, the business they do is they produce Bible. That is why somebody will wake up today and say, ah, this, this translation, I don't like it. I don't like King James. He opened his own translation. That's why there is NIV, there is King James, there is a New American. It's like business for people. So people do it as business. People write it as business. And you must understand that you must take it as a constitution, not holy. It's not God that wrote it. It's not Holy Spirit that wrote the Bible. It is a human being like me and you. They are the ones that wrote the Bible. Now, in this case, that's if we have understood this, we now ask ourselves, who are the people that wrote the Bible? I'm not going to go too far. I'm going to be giving it to you point by point so that you will be diluting it and digesting it. Every Tuesday, I will be here to be opening your eyes. So long as you are in Africa, so long as you are born in Africa, you must follow C1. That's why if you are not following this page, you are missing a lot. You want to go to heaven when the people that want to lead you to heaven don't want to go to heaven. You want to go to heaven when the people that wrote the Bible don't want to go to heaven. They are investing here on earth. They want to be here on earth. They don't want to go to heaven. So that's why you must follow C1. Somebody who can help you to establish here on earth. When you start enjoying yourself here on earth, when somebody talks about going to heaven, you understand that heaven is here. Hell is here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go far because I'm already getting late. I'm already late. There are a lot of people waiting for me here at the office. Now, look at this. When you have understood that the scripture, the Bible is not holy, it is a constitution written to guide Christians. You now ask yourself, who wrote this? Many of you don't know that some years ago, in the Western world, in, in, in Portugal, in, uh, in, 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 in the UK, in, in the Western world, they were, number one, lazy to farm. They couldn't farm. When they go to farm and come out, they come out with strange sicknesses and strange diseases. I want you to Google the research that I'm telling you. I want to tell you how Bible came to us. And how Christianity came to us. So that you understand where we are going. Now, those days, when they go to farm, when they go and farm as white people, as white men, they don't farm enough and they come back with sicknesses and diseases. Now, they were looking for people to help them do the farming. They are looking for people to help them sustain their livelihood. They came to Africa. This the history. I'm not going to tell it all. When I'm also is opening your eyes, you should also be doing research. Don't be a fool. Anything you see, you believe. Anything you hear, you take. To you, it's all good. 
whether good or bad is all good don't be like that i want you to know your history and know where you are coming from so that you understand where you are going somebody that don't know where he's coming from we never know where he's going that's why africa is dying africa is being destroyed africa is being looted because we don't have we don't know our history we don't know where we are coming from it is another people that are telling us our history and they are not telling us good history about ourselves. They are telling us bad history about ourselves. For example, they will come here. They will tell you, 200 years ago, your forefathers was worshipping Mami Ota. And because your forefathers was worshipping Mami Ota, everybody there, they were all poor. So if you don't want to worship Mami Ota, you must, if you don't want to be poor, you must change. And because you don't know your history, you believe in what they said about your past. If you don't know where you are coming from, how will you know where you are going? You don't even know the history of Africa. You just wake up, you carry Bible and start reading nonsense and putting it on your head. You don't know the history of Africa. Somebody comes and tells you that there is nothing good that happened in Africa, that was happening in Africa. You, you put it on your head and you believe it. So let me give you a brief history of how Christianity came. So these guys, when they go to farm, the Westerners, when they go to farm to farm, they come out with sicknesses, strange sicknesses, strange diseases. Now they were looking for someone and people to help them to come and do the farming. And that's how they identified us here in Africa, our forefathers. And what did they do? They bought some of them. And took them to go and farm. When our forefathers went there and farmed, they discovered that nothing was happening to them because they had powerful skin. That's why if you're an African, thank God. God loves you so much. God created you in his own image. God created you and gave you so much power and ability. If you go to France today and look at the whole national team of, of France, you, you, you will barely see a white man there because black people are great. We are strong. We never fail. It's very, very difficult for us to fail. You can see a Nigerian. They tell you that in Afghanistan, they are killing people every day. A Nigerian will get visa and go to Afghanistan. He will go with one Ghana must go back. No money, no nothing. Many of you, by the time you are entering the plane going to Afghanistan. The immigration officers at the airport had already collected everything that you had. You, you traveled to that country with nothing. But two years later, one year later, three years later, four years later, five years later, you are coming back with a brand new car, you are coming back with a house, you are coming back with so many things. White people do not have that type of ability. They don't have that capacity. That talent is only given to the blacks. It's only a black man that can go to a place where things are not working and make things work. Out of nothing, they can build things. If you tell an American to come to Imo State here where I am in Nigeria without anything, they will tell you I'm not going to go there. Number one, you must provide me with clean water, good accommodation. You must provide me with this. They don't have that capacity. Even when you provide them with all those things, you must give them a lot of money. The type of food they will eat here must not be any other food. There are food that will eat as blacks. When they eat it, they will purge. You look at yourself. Somebody with this great ability, they are telling you that your forefathers were evil. The gene that is running in you is the same gene that ran in your forefathers. The gene of power, the gene of greatness, making things out of nothing. And someone look at you and say, ah, you are nobody. You are, you are, the God hates you because of your color. And you believe because you are so brainwashed. So these people, they came to us and took our brothers and our sisters to the Western. And they farmed. When they farmed, they discovered that they were not having any problem. In fact, they were more productive than them. They say, oh, where did you get these people? They say, we got them in Africa. That is how slave trade started. Now, there, is, there was now an influx of people coming, buying our brothers, buying our sisters, taking them to Western to farm. Let me tell you this. Without us, the blacks, without us, the Africans, 
poverty was going to kill the Westerners. Hunger was going to kill them. But today, things have changed. We are the bad people. We are the weak people. We are the poor people because of history. We don't know history. Many of you just wake up and start reading the Bible. For me, before I read anything, before I open my eyes and read anything, before I hear anything, before I accept anything, I do my research. I'm not a fool that I just wake up and believe anything. Like there are so many of you who believe everything you see. You believe it. Everything you see is true. Especially if it's written by the white, it is true. I'm not part of that. I'm not among those people. Now, when, I, when these are our people... When these our people started farming there, now, they, ah, where did you get these people? They are now coming. They are coming in number. They are coming in thousands. They are getting our people. Our people are farming day in and day out. The slave trade was increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing. That's how our people, all many of our people we are gotten. And they became productive in the Western. That you must know. That the reason why they were gotten from Africa was not because they were taking them there because they loved them. Or they were taking them there to go and worship God. Or they were taking them there to go and do another thing. They were taking them because they had power. Supernatural powers. They had God-given powers. They had the strength to produce. Someone wakes up and says, eh, your forefathers, they were, you say you want to go back to their ways. Going back to their ways. What did they achieve? They achieved America. They are the ones that built America. They are the ones that built Portugal. They are the ones that built France. Without them, those people are going to die of hunger. You must be proud of yourself and know your history where you are coming from. Okay, these people have been brought there. When they were taking that place, because they went as servants, they were living in servant quarters. I'm about to close. They were living in servant quarters. Now, in that servant quarters, the whites had the same mentality that they have today that they have given to Africa and African leaders that every money they will go and tell them to say, mm -mm, you, your duty here where you are as a servant is to serve us faithfully. When you serve us faithfully here, in heaven, where you are going, that is where you will be rich like us. Are you getting what I'm saying loud and clear? That's why you see in many churches today, when you talk about prosperity, when you talk about building your people, they say, no, 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 it's not good. Heaven is for the poor. Hell is for the rich. But the people that wrote the Bible itself are not poor. They are rich. They don't want to go to heaven and become rich. They want to be rich here on earth. But the servants that are serving them are the ones that want to go to heaven and become rich. Have you ever walked into any shop and pick up a Bible, a holy Bible, and walk out of that shop with it because it's a holy Bible? No. Actually, Bible is one of the most expensive books that you can buy today from bookshelves. If the people that made the Bible did not make it for them to be rich, why are they selling it? So you see the servant Every morning they go to the servant, they brainwash the servant, they tell the servant, no, 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 you don't need to be rich. Your riches is in heaven. Your riches is waiting for you in heaven. Don't go there. Don't do this. Don't do that. Just be serving us. Just be worshipping us. We, there is a place for you in heaven, not here on earth. Our fathers, because they knew nothing, they believed. That is why Africa is poor today and it's so unfortunate it's so painful that there are many men and women of god that are still preaching that the poor will inherit the kingdom of god why the rich it will be difficult for the rich to go to heaven i believe that you understanding on next we are going to continue next tuesday 
Please make sure that you are sharing this broadcast. Make sure that everyone is following. Make sure that everyone in your family is following this. I want to open your eyes so that you understand the the irregularity, the criminality that was hidden behind the Bible. I don't have time. It's gradually, gradually. This is my office day. I'm in the office. So, man of God comes to you and preaches to you that praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Blessed are the poor, for they shall inherit heaven. And it will be difficult for the rich to enter the kingdom of God because that it will be easy for a camel to pass through the needle. Now, when you, when, you, when you evaluate all these things, when you look at all these things, in that church where the man of God is preaching, the rich does not sit at the back chairs. Even if the church starts at 7 a.m., 7 a.m. in the morning, and the rich comes at 3 p.m., the rich will never sit behind. No matter how powerful that church is, you don't see our leaders, our political criminals, when they go to churches, churches like redeemed Christian churches, churches that we thought that, oh, this is where Jesus stays. <laughs> they go to choosing deeper life. Once they arrive, no matter how late they arrive, they are going to the front seat. And usher will carry them and carry their whatever they came with and take them to the front. This is here on earth. If the rich are occupying front seat in church here on earth, what makes you believe that they will occupy hellfire when they die? No matter how bad a person is, so long as he has brought money to church, a front row seat is waiting for him. So tell me, if they are occupying the front row seat here on earth because they are rich, what will make them to enter? What will, make, what will stop them from entering heaven? So all these things, these we are written for the slaves, telling you to say, don't worry, Jesus is coming very soon. In fact, I know so many people in my church that gave their life to Jesus, gave everything they had. To their pastor because they were waiting for Jesus to come. The pastor said, Just all these things, forget it. In fact, throw them away. Jesus is coming, it's just here, on it's just nearer. It's, hey, prepare yourself for heaven. They carry everything they had, they gave to the pastor. The pastor has used whatever he was giving to build schools here on earth, not in heaven. The pastor has built hotels here on earth, not in heaven. The pastor has built universities here on earth, not in heaven. I don't know about other African countries. The best universities in Nigeria today are owned by churches. They are not preparing to go to heaven. They are preparing to be here on earth. Their children will come and inherit wealth. Your children will come and inherit poverty. Because you refuse to work. You refuse to be successful. You refuse to be rich. You want it. To go to heaven. Today, Jesus has not come. You are poor. And you are going to die poor. Your children will come and inherit your poverty. And go back to the same church that rendered their father poor. And they continue worshipping the children of the same pastor that rendered their father poor. Because he didn't show them the way to prosperity. Jesus is coming very soon. We agree. But before Jesus comes, who are you on earth? What have you achieved on earth? The history that you are reading, the Bible that you are reading, and you want to do more than the people that wrote it. Those that wrote it don't want to go to heaven anytime soon. They want to be here. They want to be here with us. In fact, they want to dwell here. They don't believe in going to heaven. But to you that don't know your history, you don't know your history. To you, everything Africa. Look at what is happening in our churches today. Look at what is happening in African churches today. Every day we are fighting against our ancestral parents. 
We are fighting against the spirit of our departed ones. We are sending Holy Ghost fire to them. We are sending the blood of Jesus to them. We are sending, uh, uh, we are detaching ourselves from them every blessed day. Then you, you, you ask yourself, as I conclude, you ask yourself, how about the Westerners? The Israelites, the ones that committed greater sin than our parents, if our parents did commit sins. Remember, our parents did not support homosexual. But the people that wrote the Bible today have brought homo homosexual to us. They say, this is now the right way to go. Our forefathers did not do that. Imagine if it was our forefathers. Our ancestors are being accused our ancestors are being humiliated by ignorant men and women of god who call themselves men and women of god those that don't know history for you to be a great for you to be a great man or a woman of god you must first of all know your history if you don't know your history you cannot tell me about my history you must know your history first. You must read the history before you start sending Holy Ghost fire to your parents that loved you that died. Your forefathers, your, your mothers that loved you that died. They came here, took our parents, raped our parents, killed our parents, made them slaves, and come back a few years later and told us that our parents are the evil ones. They are the right ones. And you believe it because you are mad. Because you don't have history. Because your brain is gone. You don't use your brain to reason. There is no brain on your brain. What is there is sand, soil. May God have mercy on you. When you read your Bible, when you read your Bible, I don't I don't stop you from reading the Bible, but read the Bible, Konya Munuche. If you read the Bible, you read the Bible. You read the Bible. As you read it, you read it. 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 You read You cannot tell me that blessed are the poor, for they shall inherit the heaven. When you yourself that is preaching it is not poor. <laughs> I myself, I refuse to be poor. When, when I was being called to do this work of God, I look at the people that are doing the work. I look at their shoe. Look at their houses. I say, mm, 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 I can't do this thing. <laughs> this is not my calling. <laughs> poverty. Me and poverty, we can never use one road. <laughs> the person that is telling you, blessed are the poor, are not poor. Oh, blessed are not again. It's blessed not hungering the person. Money is the root of all evil. You believe. But the pastor that is preaching that into you, immediately he finished. He said, offering time, blessing time. What are you giving him? Is he not money? Is he not the root of all evil? Someone say, no, not money. They say, the, the, the love of money. Are you mad? Who doesn't love money? Who doesn't love money? Mention that person. Mention the person. Even God himself loves money. Who doesn't love money? Just mention one person that don't love money. Say, this one don't love money. Everyone loves money. And because money is very, very important, you must have it. Money is a defense. If you don't have it, you are nothing. You are going nowhere. No one is going to respect you. And that's why you need to look for it. You need to look for it. You need to have it. It's a must-have. Because the people that are telling are criticizing money, the people that are speaking against money, they want money. When pastor finished preaching, he said, offering time, blessing time. You give him money. The people that wrote the Bible said the money is the root of all evil. When you collect the Bible from them, you give them money. That same root of all evil. There are people that have useless their life today. Go to churches, you will see them. They are praying. Today is Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. A working day. That's why when I become the governor or one of my sons or daughter become a governor in this state, if I catch you doing church service on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, 
that church will be closed. There is time for everything. Sunday is enough for you to go to church and pray because God himself, God, when he was creating heaven and earth, he worked. On Monday, he worked. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He worked. One, he rested for one day. And he said, this day that I've rested, keep it holy. But you, you see people who are doing 30 days, 31 days of glory, 31 days of fasting and prayer. Ignorance. You discover that the more we pray, the more we, we are ignorant, the more we are poor. Look at a whole Nigeria. Look at Africa. No African nation can be able to sponsor their budget, their national budget without borrowing money from China, without borrowing money from IMF. But we are praying. The more we pray, the more we are poor. Because it's not about prayer. It's all about knowing what to do. I will leave you with this today. Next Tuesday, we are going to proceed. Before you go far in life, you must know your history. What is your history? Many of you hate your village. You hate your village so much. You cannot even go to your village. You cannot even travel to your village. Many of you don't know where your parents are buried. Your, your forefathers are buried. Because they told you they are evil. You cannot. You don't know your history. You don't even know who you are. Then how are you going to go far? China refused to be brainwashed. China refused the Bible. They said... I have Bible. We have accepted the Bible, but we should not allow ourselves to forget our culture because of Bible. China refused. They even refused English language. Go to China and see what they are learning in their schools. Go to China and see what they are doing. Go to China and see they 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 refuse dollars. They refuse to be manipulated. Today. Even if on paper, America is claiming to be world best. China is not world number one. Technology. Without China, many of us today will not even have a phone. They have. If I come to your house, 90% of the things in your house are made in China. They are now the world power because they refused to be used. Are they praying? They are not praying. Are they worshipping Jesus? They are not worshipping Jesus. Let us not allow our worship. Everything that you overdo is a sin. What Anything you overdo, anything you overdo, Nigeria will like to overdo things. Nigeria will like to overdo things. We see a white man praying. We come back to Nigeria. White man has just prayed for one hour. Nigeria will pray for 24 hours. <laughs> when you finish praying, you wake up. Hunger will kill you. Go to churches of those that pray too much and see how hunger is destroying them. Because Monday, they are in church. Tuesday, they are in church. Wednesday, they are in church. That place is full of poverty. Because people don't have opportunity to go and work to make money. So where are we going? The richest man in Africa today is not a Christian. He's a Muslim. The richest people on earth today don't even have time to pray. I'm not discouraging prayer. Pray. There is time for everything. When it is time to pray, you pray. Don't overdo everything. Don't overdo everything. Lastly, I, I was at uh, every day's market. I was buying something. Then there is this uh, man... In front of me. He was trying to pay for what he bought. Unfortunately, he 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 didn't have enough money. And I was behind him. Then, then I asked, ah, brother, how are you? <laughs> he said to me, I'm well. <laughs> I'm rich. The pastor taught them that any make everything that you say prophetic. Even when you don't have, say you have. So, I have money that I wanted to use to pay for him. But because he told me that I'm rich, I'm well, I left him. 
<laughs> he didn't have money to pay. This is where Christianity has damaged the brains of most Nigerians. Most Nigerians are zombies. Sometimes when even I see them on the road, they are zombies. They are zombies. You know, I, I look at them, I see them as zombies because their brain is finished. Something that you have seen with your physical eye like this, Bible and what your pastor told you will make you to look at blue and say it's black. I looked at him. He doesn't have money to pay. I have money to give to him to complete. But he said, I'm rich, I'm well. I left him with his richness and his awareness. <laughs> and he couldn't pay. They returned back the things that he bought. Christianity has damaged people's mentality. Christianity has destroyed people's brain. Because we have abused it. We have abused it. It's just like democracy. Everything that comes to Africa. When you go to America and see how they conduct their democratic election, you will see that there is a difference between what they are doing and what we are doing here. As in Africa, we are not qualified to have democracy. We are supposed to still be ruled by the military because we are not yet qualified. I had even qualified. We are not yet qualified. How can we be in a democracy? One single man we make cement. One man, we make cement and say cement is going to be sold at 5,000 naira per bag. But if you go to Zambia, the same man is selling cement at 3,000 per bag. Everything that he uses to produce the cement is here. Here in Nigeria. Here in Africa. He doesn't import anything, but he says this is democracy. One man decides what happens in cement industry. Is this democracy? We are not yet qualified to have democracy in Nigeria. I'm supposed to be ruling us. We are not here qualified to have democracy in Africa. We are supposed to be ruled by the army. Because everything that comes to us, we abuse it. Today we cannot even vote. Because the person we vote, is not the one that is going to rule. But it's democracy. We copied it from the white. Today we are overdoing it. <laughs> we are overdoing it. So if you see people that are practicing democracy... Africa also, we are practicing democracy. Everything that comes to us, we abuse. The white people that taught us how to pray, if you go to their church, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Oh, holy, wow. It's only in Africa where you come back, you come to church 7 a.m. in the morning and leave 7 p.m. On a Monday, you come back. Tuesday, you come back. Wednesday, you come back. Thursday, you come back. Friday you come back. Sunday you come back again. Because we are not wise. I feel sorry for ourselves. Please, share the broadcast. Somebody say, please give me your account. Dear Pastor. Ugu Chikode. Say, Dear Pastor Siawan, please send me your account number. Let me send you something immediately for telling our gullible brothers and sisters the truth. You're a true man of God. God bless you. Uh, Ugu Chikode. Paul, also, Christianity is a big scam. I refuse to be a believer, but a thinker. Once you start thinking, you are very, very close. So do you mean that China don't have Christians there? China have Christians there, but they have regulated Christians. They don't overdo things. Where there are few Christians there, just like when I visited China, I never saw anybody preaching on the street. But where I stay, I don't even sleep well. Once it's once it is 4 a.m., you will be hearing megaphone everywhere. They will preach from morning to night. When you finish your business, you want to go and the rest, you want to go and sleep. They will disturb you with the word of God. Every day, word of God. Every day, word of God. Every day, preaching. <laughs> what is the result? The result is corruption. The result is making men of God rich and making yourself poor. Finally, forgive me for taking your time, but finally, 
when I come to you and tell you that uh, today we are going to do 21 days of fasting and prayer, so every day for 21 days you will come to church. I am a pastor, especially Nigerian men and women of God. They, they, they don't want to do any other thing. For me, I am a business person. I am a political consultant. I do politics. I do business. I don't get anything from serving God. I spend most of the things I have from serving God. There are many people that don't know that. That's why we have only but one service. One service in a week. And that is Sunday. After that Sunday, you will never see me in church praying for people or delivering people or preaching. No. I allow you to go and work. Go and work. You came, you are looking for a job, you came to church on Sunday with your documents. I pray for your document. On, so, on Monday, don't come back to church. Carry that your document. Go and look for job. I am blessed. Favor is on it. Don't bring it back to church. Okay, if you come back on Monday, who is going to give you the job? It's, I'm not the one that will give you the job. So if I tell you to say, okay, Every, uh, uh, we are doing 21 days of prayer. Now, you do not know that I don't have a job. I don't have what I'm doing. My job is just to pray for you. So on a Monday, you leave the job that you are doing and come. When you finish praying, you give an offering to me. Tuesday, you give an offering to me. Wednesday, you give an offering to me. Thursday, you give an offering to me. Friday, you give an offering to me. Saturday, you give an offering to me. Sunday, you give an offering to me. What happens? I become richer. You become poorer. That is why in Africa today, men of God are rich. Their members are poor. Because their members are not working. The time that the members are supposed to use to work, they are in church giving the little one they have to me. Are you, are you getting it? Check it properly. Go around African churches today. Men of God are rich. That's why you see a, one man of God is having five private jets. But majority of the church members are poor. Because they are coming and they are giving Whatever they have to me. They are giving their money to me. They are giving uh, 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 they are giving their time to me. They don't have opportunity to go and work and make money. The little one they have, they are giving it to me in offering because every day is prayer. And after every prayer, you must give me your offering. So I am becoming rich as a man of God. You are becoming poor as a member. Because you are not working, you are coming to me. You cannot come to my church after preaching. You don't give offering. No, that offering come to me. My account is swelling. How about you, a church member? That is why in my own ministry, you can never, there is nothing like midweek service. That midweek service, go and look for job. There is nothing like uh, 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 today is Monday clinic. That Monday clinic, go and look for job. Make money and be successful. I cannot be successful alone. I have tested poverty. I have tested riches. I refuse to go to poverty. When you come out of poverty, you will know that heaven is here. It's not where you are pointing. Heaven is here. If you have heard with your ears, share this broadcast. And remember... That every Tuesday, I am here on this page. I am opening your, your ears. I am talking to you. And I'm praying for you. I am praying that whatever be your heart desire, all of you that have listened to this message, be granted. Everything that be your heart desire, all of you that have listened, all of you that are sharing, all of you, that are on this broadcast. Everything that be your heart desire be granted. This week, your visa is approved. This week, your documents are approved. This week, your business is open. This week, your doors are open. This week, financial open doors are happening. This week, great opportunities are coming to you. It is well with you. Your doors are open. You are unstoppable. 
You are unshakable. Where things could not work for people, it shall work for you. Where people did not respond, they will respond after this prayer. I release the grace upon your life. I even open your brain right now. Let your brain open. May you know what is the truth. May you know what is the what is the lie. May you know what is real. May you know what is fake. May you go back to your root and make peace with your ancestors. And may things begin to work for you. I have prayed and decree it is done. I want you to type amen in the comment section. Remember to share the broadcast. God bless you. See you next Tuesday. Bye.